Hey, it's Harry from PB Tech, and today we're going to be talking about virtual reality, entering the realm of education. For some of you may not know that learning via VR is slowly becoming more accessible, and a few forward-thinking schools and universities around the country have already taken the red pill. VR may have a long way to go before we see it becoming part of kids' daily education, but there are still some great educational VR experiences available right now. But before we get to those, I first want to quickly explain what I found on the current state of VR in regards to education. The theory is, virtual reality in schools has the potential to provide immersive experiences for students on an infinite amount of subject matters, helping to create visceral and emotional reactions leading to enhanced memory retention and overall learning. Okay, okay, but if VR is such a great learning tool, then why aren't we seeing it in every school already? Well, the current biggest setback in VR development for education is that it's not getting enough exposure as an educational medium. For example, when you hear the letters VR, you're probably thinking about fun and games and not really about learning opportunities. That's obviously because thus far it's been predominantly marketed towards gaming and entertainment industries. So when an educational institute considers VR, I can't imagine they take it very seriously. Or if they do, they're probably looking for a proof of concept that already exists. But the idea that VR could be a fun medium shouldn't necessarily be seen as a negative in regards to education, as VR experiences can blur the lines between fun and learning, which could increase student engagement exponentially. Oh, you think you're having fun, do you? Boom! You just learned something. Now go tell your mum about it. Educational practices inevitably change, however notoriously slowly. And if we want to give our kids, or even grandkids, the best learning opportunities possible, then educational VR is going to have to get a lot more traction somehow. To make a start, we search for the best examples of immersive educational software and hardware available today and had ourselves a little play. Ryman. Great. The first experience we tested out was called Universe Sandbox 2, and we thought it'd be great for all of our future scientists. It's basically a physics simulator that proves that scale is unlimited in virtual reality. There's no objective to this experience, you simply learn through exploration and experimentation. It also teaches you just how fragile our existence on Earth really is. Next we tried Fantastic Contraption, which would be perfectly suited to all of our future engineers. It had problem solving, spatial awareness, and if you failed to achieve your goal, then you could always just share your creation online, or look at other people's to get some inspiration. Next we tried out Tilt Brush, which we think would be great for all of our future artists. It gives students the freedom to be creatively unrestricted and cringe at the thought of ever having to start on a boring white piece of A4 paper again. You can also upload your designs for others to fully behold and to navigate through in 3D. Next up we tried an experience called Organon, which would be great for future doctors. It was a distraction-free guided tour of some usually complicated subject matter, such as human biology but it was done in a magic school bus style, which was disturbingly awesome. Right on the magic school bus. We are here! <laughs> we are? We're in Ralphie's bro. Even though VR isn't fully being utilized by the education industry yet, it's great to know that at least the technical challenges of this medium have been met and are rapidly improving. For instance, we've been testing out the HPZ VR backpack, which removes the need for a VR headset tether by the user wearing the entire computer on a harness. This removes the last physical connection to the real world and helps to become more fully immersed without the worry of tripping over wires. <laughs> it only weighs about 4 kgs and is fairly comfortable. Well, as comfortable as wearing a very expensive computer on your back while blind feels. <laughs> its high price may be due to the HPZ being currently ready for the most advanced software developers, packing a class 1 graphics card and plenty of memory to make sure there's never any glitches in your matrix. But those components don't nearly cover its cost. So I think what you're paying for is for the thrill of being one of the first to own and wear a piece of the future. The HPZ is powered by swappable rechargeable batteries, so you can stay in virtual reality for virtually ever. But if you're too immersed, but not quite done with looking at screens for the day, then the HPZ has a trick up its sleeve. It can dock and become a desktop computer too. Creations like the HPZ seem like a step towards a future where VR is part of a normal education. Maybe by creating a smoother experience for younger users, by removing tangible limitations and potential hazards, while retaining that full visual quality that maybe a wireless VR headset adapter couldn't do. Yeah, there are a few cheaper VR backpacks out there, but none that work and look as good. 
I mean, we have to look at what's best right now to see what might be a standard for the future of VR. And if we're speaking about quality aiding immersion, then we've got to talk about the Vive Pro that we were using today, which has an increased resolution over its predecessor and makes you forget that you're actually looking at a screen. This can lead to a much deeper learning environment. So I guess the smoother the experience, the better and easier it is to understand information. But for a cheeky little unboxing video on the Vive Pro, you can check right here. From experience, I think that traditional education modes aren't for everyone, and if there was an alternative medium for education, using software and hardware like we tried out today, I know that I wish I could have used it when I was in school. VR just makes sense, because we evolved to learn and remember information from our experiences, not from just sitting and staring cross-eyed at a whiteboard like uh, some of us did. But seeing is believing, and for VR it couldn't be truer. It's just one of those things that's difficult to explain on camera, but easy to understand once you have experienced it for yourself. So if you haven't already, go and find someone who has one, or go buy one, or just try it now, and let me know what you think about its learning potential, or whether you find any other quality educational VR experiences that we didn't show today. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Remember that reality is a lie, and I'll catch you next time. Bye! the volume of a sphere. Four thirds pi times the radius cubed. Exchange. 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 Exchange.